Hello everyone, my name is Matt Harris, and we are here today, March 15th, 2021, at Grace Baptist Church in Pasadena, Maryland, to celebrate the baptism of Amanda Jean Nelson. And since the Patapsico River is a little chilly this time of year for a baptism, we want to thank Pastor Fox and the congregation for sharing their warm baptismal waters with us today. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for the salvation that he has provided for us. We thank you that Amanda has come to know your son as Savior. And we just pray that her baptism would bring glory and honor to you and be a blessing to those who attend and those who watch the video later. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Before we continue, I would just like to mention that I am blind. So if it might appear that I'm not responding to something visually, well, now you know why. Amanda Jean Nelson is a visually impaired blogger and YouTuber who often uses these social media platforms to share her faith in Jesus. We met a couple years ago after I commented on one of her articles. A friendship developed and after that we started studying scripture together. Well, during that time, we both grew much closer to Jesus, and Amanda asked if I would baptize her, and I agreed. It's important for us to understand that scriptural baptism does not baptize a person into a particular church denomination, nor does it save a person from hell. But rather, in simple terms, baptism is the outward acknowledgement of the inward acceptance of the only person who can save a soul, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who demonstrated his love toward us, and while that we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And now Amanda has a few words she would like to say. Take it away, Amanda. Thank you, Matt, for that wonderful introduction. Just like the sower in Matthew 13, God used seeds of faith to plant it upon my heart. It all started when my middle school friend Kaylee started to share with me what she was learning in church about God and the gift that he had to offer. She would often share this at the gym, during health class, and at lunch. And soon my heart began to grow. But unfortunately, my family and I had to move from Texas to Florida. Nevertheless, I decided to let my faith grow. And so I asked my mother for a Bible. And unfortunately, due to my low vision, the only Bible I had at the time was a children's Bible with large print. I began to read my Bible daily, and I also discovered Christian cartoons. Soon after this, I discovered that the only way I could become a child of God was to repent of my sins, accept that Jesus died on the cross for my sins, and that God, his Father, raised him from the dead three days later. Soon after I discovered this, I decided that I wanted to become a Christian. So during a father-daughter date with my stepfather, I asked him to please help me find Kaylee's number because I was ready to be saved. But that night, surprisingly enough, with tears going down my cheeks, my father led me in the prayer of salvation. And that night, I had peace. Now Matt's going to share with you about this gift that God offers. Take it away, Matt. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your journey to Jesus. That's a great testimony. And I always love to hear how people came to Christ. Over the past year, because of the pandemic, we have all become quite familiar with the phrase social 
distancing. But did you also know that a spiritual distancing exists between us and God because of our sin? And unlike how social distancing helps protect us against the coronavirus, spiritual distancing from God equates to death. And that's because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And what death ultimately means is to be separated from God for all of eternity in hell because of our sin. 2,000 years ago, during his earthly ministry, Jesus gave us a glimpse into this place of torment when he gave an eyewitness account of a man there, a man who begged for one drop of water to cool his tongue, a man who cried out and said, I am tormented in this flame, a man who is still there today and will be for all of eternity. This is the wages of sin, the destination we're all headed toward without Jesus. But now for the good news. The good news is that because Jesus was fully God and fully man, and because he loves us, he came to save us from that flame. He accomplished his goal in the first century when he shed his blood on a Roman cross to forgive our sin and to reconcile us back to God his Father from whom our sin had separated us. And it was then that Jesus' Father raised him from the dead. This is the gospel. And this is what it means when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. God promises that if we repent from our sin and believe the gospel, he will give us eternal life, a life beyond the grave. And to repent simply means to be sorry to God for our sin and then turn away from them and ask Jesus to come into our life and forgive us. This is God's gift to the world. But just like any gift, we must first receive it before it becomes ours. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. God loves us, and he wants to give us his free gift of eternal life. So now, if you would like to receive it, then please pray this simple prayer with me now by faith and mean it in your hearts. Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and would be lost in hell without you. Please forgive me for my sins and come into my life and save me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins and that God your Father raised you from the dead. I want to receive your free gift of eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Believing the message that you just heard is the prerequisite for baptism. So now, Amanda, are you ready to get dunked? Yeah, I am, but be sure you bring me back up. No worries, and if I do forget, I know CPR. Oh, good. So, uh, Amanda, 
Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I do. Do you believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that God his Father raised him from the dead? Yes, I do. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit as commanded by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. Yep, I'm good. I'm good. All right. And um, before we conclude, Amanda has a few words she would like to say. Thank you, Matt. As I grew as a believer, I learned that if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. Mm. Their old life is gone, and their new life has begun. I have been saved through grace, through faith, not of myself. But it is a gift, and that gift was purchased with the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you. And I would just like to close by giving a special thanks to Amanda's middle school friend, Kaylee, who nudged Amanda a little closer to Jesus because she had the courage to share her faith. Great things happen when we overcome our fear to share our faith with other people. I also want to give a shout out to Amanda's stepdad who led her to the Lord that night. And I also want to thank Ken and Marte Wheeling and Kirk Giles for all their behind the scenes work to help this event tonight to be possible. And it's our prayer that Amanda's baptism might nudge someone else a little closer to Jesus. This concludes Amanda Jean Nelson's baptismal ceremony. We thank everyone who participated. Good night and God bless.